Hello there, this is Xiao, and welcome to another episode of Today, I'll explain what makes a sound voice-like and use that to explain formant filters. For those who are new, please go check out my tutorial on the wah effect. And remember that if you're lost, check the tutorial archive. So let's get started. Vocal formants. A formant is a resonant frequency in an audio signal. We've dealt with these before. The wah effect, wobble bass, and noise riser all used a resonant frequency, aka a formant, to make their sound. Indeed, many instruments produce formants, which is what gives them their timbre, including the human voice. The mouth and throat impart vocal formants onto the sound from the vocal cords. The shape and position of a person's mouth changes the frequency of the formants. The combination of these formants and other mouth noises produces the pattern of sounds that we perceive as speech. More specifically, vocal formants create vowel sounds. For example, the vowel sound E is produced by a different pattern of formants than the vowel sound ah. Our brains are incredibly sensitive to these patterns of sound, so much so that we actually notice these patterns in other sounds and perceive them as sounding like speech. This is what I meant when I say that a sound is voice-like. It has a pattern of formants that sound like the human voice. But we can take this one step further. Audio engineers actually figured out ways to impart vocal formants onto sounds, which makes them sound voice-like to us. There are many ways to do this, which I'll get into in later videos. For now, I'll show you one way to do it using just an EQ. So here we have a basic super saw chord pattern. I added some drums and a bass for fun. Now let's impart some vocal formants. To do this, I will be using three parallel bandpass filters. You can do this with any three filters that have resonant peaks, but I like to use three bandpass filters because I like the way it sounds. Now it's important to remember that these bandpass filters have to be in parallel. If you try to put them all in the same parametric EQ, they'll cut each other out and you'll end up with no sound at all, which is not good. So to get them in parallel, route your audio signal to three new tracks. So we have our signal on this track here and I'm going to route it to these three tracks. There we go. And then it's good to route all of these tracks to one bus track so that you can apply effects to all of them. There we go, they're all on this particular track here. Then on each of the three tracks, place a parametric EQ and set it to bandpass filter. I prefer a narrower bandwidth for things like this, so about there or so, give or take. Now let's make sure we have this same EQ on all three of our tracks. There we go. Now the formants are generally pretty spread out, so let's move the EQs around so that they're not all right on top of each other. Let's give it a listen. It's already starting to sound kind of voice-like. To complete the effect, automate the cutoff frequencies of each of the filters. Let's create some automation clips. And now make sure that each of the automation clips are moving sort of independent of each other. Just really drastic to make the changes super obvious. All right, now let's give it a listen. And if you want to make it louder, you just put a compressor on the bus track. Here we have a multiband compressor. Wow. 
It's pretty cool. Sounds kind of like an old school phaser effect. But what if you want to mimic actual vowel patterns? That requires a bit more work. Specific vowel sounds are achieved based on the position of each formant relative to the others. You have to consider not just the frequency of a given formant, but how far away it is from the rest. This gets pretty complicated, so it's easier to look up a vowel formant frequency chart. They define the formant frequency locations necessary to create a given vowel sound. You can find many of these charts with a quick Google search. Once you've found one, you take your bandpass filters and you set their cutoff frequency so that they match the formant frequencies for the vowel you're going to create. So let's just choose an arbitrary example. I'll set this one to 360. This one to 2200. And this one to, I think it's 2960. All right, close enough. It doesn't have to be exact. Then you want to set your automation to match those values. Each DAW does that a little differently, so if you're not sure, check the manual. For FL Studio, basically what you would do is you would right-click here, copy the value for this, and then paste it onto the control point for a given automation clip. And if you want your vowels to change over time, you need to repeat that whole process for every vowel sound you want to use. This is tedious, but there are ways for you to have your cake and eat it too. One way is by using a dedicated vowel filter plugin. Let me just change a few things real quick. Move this over here. Here we have FL Studio's Fruity Love Filter. It has a bunch of configurable filters that can be arranged in any way you want, pretty much. It also has a convenient preset called Formant Vowels. You choose the preset and then automate the Modulation X knob here to change the vowel. <laughs> It also has some other options. Another option is FL's Effector. It has a whole bunch of effects on it, including a Vox setting, which is a vowel filter. <laughs> You can find many other vowel filter plugins online. Some examples include Sugarbyte's Wow Filter or the free Formant Filter VST. Links to both of those in the description. And if you're feeling ambitious, you can actually build your own vowel filter using some EQs, a patch bay plugin, and a multi articulator XY controller. Here's one that I made. I'll just sort of walk through each of the plugins in here to show you what I did. <laughs> So there you have it, vocal formant filtering made easy. Anyway, that's about it for this tutorial. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions about vocal formants or formant filtering, comment below. I'm always open for questions. And as always, if you'd like to request a VoxFX tutorial, please send me a message. Remember, if it's talky, I can talk about it. Next time, I'll show you how to pitch shift a vocal and use that to create the Queen Chrysalis voice. Until then, have fun and keep making sound. Box
Excuse me. Why do I always belch? It's so weird. 